Okay, so keys, y'all. Today we are going to figure out pathway if we ever find the code word. And how would we figure out a code? We'd have to learn how exactly it works, how it's set up, what kind of map would you put out? Because most codes are a map, or at least a figuring out of positions and places. Think of English, for example. I can speak that motherfucker so well, but I have no idea how it actually operates. I don't even know what an infinite phrase and a finite phrase differences are, except it, one sounds like it's a stutter or hesitation. <coughs> Sorry, I am a little gassy. My apologies. So, the best way to figure out the code to get back to Orion is to figure out how we are exactly set up. So, this is called the Recursion Formula Behind Life Itself by NaNoWriams. I already liked it. I already watched it. We're going in theater mode. Yes. <clears throat> Remember, give kudos to him because he made this. I'm just going over it and looking at all the signs and symbols and showing you what I see. Maybe you can see what I see and understand where I'm coming from. Draw a line. I have no idea what the fuck that is. Coming here. off of it, then repeat. Like I don't know if he's supposed to be some like a CD disc or an alien space thing with Google AI's Google, Google whatever. But it always fucks me up. But look at the little branch. Draw a little branch. Same thing on those three lines. If you keep repeating these steps, not only will you have drawn a really beautiful fractal. But you have also drawn something that remarkably resembles a plant. Mm -hmm. Now, look outside. Don't those leaves and trees look like they've been built using a similar process? It doesn't stop at plants either. Take a look at how our lungs, brains, and kidneys are defined. Don't they look like fractals too? So, why does this happen? Why is it that there are a huge portion of living things' parts that are built using fractals? Why does life like it so much? Now you can say even life has a family tree. <laughs> All right, I'll stop my shit. I'll stop my shit. But yeah, just pay attention because this is important. <clears throat> this is a very difficult question to answer indeed. I mean, fractals are pretty complicated shapes with many intricate details, aren't they? How does nature manage to fit all of that inside the DNA of an organism? Let's take a step back and look at the true nature of these fractals. How are they defined? How do we generate these fractals? And to fit the theme of biology, we're going to be using cells instead of twigs to make this plant this time. Let's start with a cell. I'll name it B. Can you guys and hear B this? is kind of like our stand-in for a stem cell. It can turn into other cell types. There you go. The rule for B? Shit. I can branch two more Bs mm -hmm. and turn itself into F. Yes. F also has its own rules. F will double itself every generation. If we keep reiterating this, voila! we've made another tree. Have you noticed something? We only needed three short rules to define this fractal, and the computer can just reiterate these rules every generation. Do you, can you see how crazy the pathway could be? Like, think of how many times our cells have multiplied in this variation, and we're trying to find the road, well, I'm at least trying to find the road back to the one that gets me the fuck. Wherever the fuck that is. I don't know what... what well, no one knows what happens after that, but it's like a... What would happen after that, you wonder? Would you just be removed from a cycle, or would you be put somewhere completely different? That's a question I'd like to know. I'm going to compact these rules into a definition that computers can read. This way of defining fractals is invented by the theoretical biologist Astrid Linda Mayer. Don't worry, I'll walk you through the basics of it. The cool thing about these is that it can not only describe plant growth, but the fractals you're probably familiar with, like the Sapinski Triangle. All you need to do is state the starting condition, also known as the axiom, and the rules for how the fractal grows. And for every generation, you substitute in the rules in their respective places. The front-facing brackets you see here are really meant for drawing the twig cases. It just tells the drawer to save this position in mind and come back to it once it... Like, this space right here? Is the, is, is the jizz that made the F. 
Daddy B and Mommy B got together and made Baby F and it's right there, right on top of it. That's why he wears a little party hat. They're putting it on his hat. That's what they're doing. That's what they do. Counters the cute. back bracket. Negative B means draw B onto the left and plus B means draw B onto the right. Well, I'm not going to bore you with the rest of the details and rules. I think it's much more fun if you go and try it yourself. Go ahead, go play around and find out with this L system generator online. To me, playing with interactive tools online like this one can be much more enlightening and like, engaging look at the different than simply variations. listening to a lecture. But you sometimes, trees, like tools can I don't even know how to try to draw But having nowhere to go, and the lessons don't really feel connected. Luckily, thanks to our sponsor today, Brilliant.org, you can simply now do this for free online. Yeah, we, I, I Brilliant can't do is that. the best way to learn Magnum subscription. My bad. See dude. you there. Okay. Now, you <clears> might <throat> have noticed that this very complex shape with such meticulous detail can be. Like, I'm not only just giving that to be a dick, I don't know if I'll get flagged for that either. I'm just letting you know. I'm not trying to be that way. But it's just like, it's still. An ad is an ad, and I'm. Uh, nah. 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 No, I ain't taking that. <laughs> I just want to be as annoying as possible. I'm not trying to step on the toes entirely. Just hovering a foot, just a little bit. That's all. Simplified into three lines of information. And instead of storing the infinite details of the entire <laughs> shape, we can just store this recursion formula while taking up much less space. This, in fact, is one of the reasons why living things use fractals as a shape-building strategy. This is a part of a concept known as algorithmic complexity. It's a measure of the trade-off between how much space one needs to store information and the time it takes to execute that information. For example, our fractals. As highly detailed as they are, they're very simple from an algorithmic complexity standpoint. I'm okay, so this formula right here is basically like, this is the shortest answer. This is like the first stick, basically. This is what happens when the stick can grow endlessly. Um, this is a measure of saying, hey, if we put this formula in, we'll have a twig with like three branches. This is what happens when it just keeps growing the way the fuck it wants to. Oh, we're going to keep growing three branches. And I'm going to go three branches on those three branches. And those three branches will about three branches on their three branches upon three branches of their three branches. Like their great, 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 great branches did before them. You know, that kind of shit. Like that shit. Same fucking thing. Also, looking at that reminds me of Final Fantasy for some reason. Which is funny. But, uh, yeah. That's a thing. That's a thing. So this is just the first primary base. This is the base. This is, like, what starts it. This is what happens in its most basic condition if we do it once. This is if we lose count. The first time... We don't know who we're related to. Um, the very first of the first... He was named after the 28th generation of George. Not George. George. It almost sounds like Georgia, but it's George. Okay, don't fuck it up. You understand what I mean. This is the first... This is a result of you, you let it go. You set it and forget it. It's just the same shape over and over again. It takes a long time to unravel those rules into shapes, yes, but the rules themselves don't take up much space at all. There is a flip side to this where you can store the shape itself and execute that with little time, but that's not very good for living things as it would require so many unique proteins and molecular machines to be encoded in the DNA, which yeah. can cause a bunch of hurdles down the line. You will need to define each part over and over again in the DNA code. The cell can just follow the recursion. In living things, a lot of structures and traits come into existence due to Little evolution and eyes. pressures. And there is definitely one for fractal shapes. Here's an example of such a pressure. Imagine just that expression right there is the default. I'm, 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 just, I'm dying on this hill. That is the default for the eyes. They like googly eyes, actually. Now I'm looking at it, it's just like, that's what makes the most sense to me. It always looks like googly eyes to me. Once I see that, it's just... Mm -mm. We have this square block of cells, and we want to design a system that can transport fluids, like air or blood, to every cell. 
Sure, we can sacrifice a portion of space into plumbing, but that's a huge waste of space and cells. We want to reach every cell with as little volume cost as possible. It all comes down to the nature of fractals. They can span an area or a volume, but they themselves can be lines or simple 2D shapes. Take a look at this Hilbert curve. It fills up space, but it doesn't take away from any operating area significantly. I'd like you to imagine these curves as if they're pipes carrying blood. Can you see how we're able to reach into a majority of these cells without sacrificing much space? We're able to maximize our reach via For anyone wondering what he means by spaces, don't look at the whole image, look at each individual square. And what you'll notice, there are some squares that only get a quarter, but the inner squares get one half, if not three quarters. It's just the outer squares don't get as much, but that's okay because the majority is filled up in here. But you'll also notice there isn't a single square that's filled up entirely, unless like you separate these lines and adjust them a certain way. But when you really look at it, no, these squares, each and every individual square is only used up to either a quarter or a third capacity, never completely full. That's what he means by space. Like the space in between, as well as inside. Without sacrificing too much volume or area in that reach. In fact, you yourself right now is a very good example of this. Your blood vessels, lymphatic system, and lungs also use fractals for a similar trade-off. Our lungs, Are obviously, aren't constructed like Hilbert curves. This is because the last cell will be at the very bottom of the barrel when it comes to priority. That's why we have this sort of spiked out fractal instead. This whole part honestly reminds me of a problem in first year calculus, how one must have an infinite amount of paint to paint the infinite surface area of a shape, but the shape itself is finite in volume. It's really cool how fractals, and as a consequence, life, behave in such a remarkably similar fashion. But perhaps the most fascinating reasons for fractals- The colors are so fucking pretty. Is found by delving into the nitty gritty details. How does a living thing know how to form the lung shape? Where does this code we saw in the first section get encoded in the DNA? And of course, biologists don't want to experiment with humans, so we use fruit flies and rat rats instead. See, I paused that the first time, and I totally forgot about this part. And I, and now I'm sitting here remembering it. Just like... I don't know about that. I, I, I'm, I like, remember that whole 100 test subjects who were black men who scientists claimed black people carried syphilis and then it turns out they injected syphilis into them in order to prove the study. Anyone remember Henry Adelax? Does anyone remember how we know exactly why we know how much pressure the human body can take because no one went underwater to find out no one went underwater to find out human body pressure mm -mm. no 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 ask the germans about that i'm, I'm just saying there's there there like the brass bull during the greek roman times or whatever fucking time y'all know about that they threw people in like this brass bull and lit a fire underneath of it the sounds of the people inside sounded like a bull just being like Mah! or whatever bulls sound like i'm not sure if they sound like moo i guess i don't know um but that was the sound that used to come out so i'm just sitting here like um this would not be the first nor the last time people have been expect you know i i heard of this one thing where they actually got people to take this stuff claiming it would make them feel better I heard that was an experiment. I can't remember exactly what it is I'm thinking of. Though. It's on the tip of my tongue. I, I I know what I'm talking about. I just I, I can't remember exactly what it is I'm thinking of. I just know. I just know. There was something like that where people were supposed to take something. I'm not sure. I guess I was supposed to make them feel better. And it it I, 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 think, there, I, th I think people were getting sick from that. But I'm not sure what that was. So... I don't know. Like, it, like, it'll come to me, but it'll probably be well after this. But I, I just, I, I don't, I, I can't remember. 
It, it slips my mind. But I'm pretty sure this is uh, humans. I mean, it's just they haven't been experimented with this. I think. So I don't know. Anyway, let's uh, carry on. Flies don't exactly have lungs. Instead, they use their trachea to deliver oxygen. However, Freaks. like lungs, <laughs> they are fractal shaped. Let's skip ahead to when the fly is an embryo. The trachea has its humble beginnings. It's initially just a pipe that stretches through the entire body. Suddenly, a few lumps pop out of the main tube. This is where our trachea branches will grow. On each of these cells, there are direction sensors called breathless, and these sense a molecule named branchless. So, well, why is this important? Around the trachea, there are a bunch of cells that make and send out branchless. Once the cells get a whiff of this, they move towards the source of the signal, and that is how we make our primary branch of the trachea. Once they get near the signal cells, the signal gets very strong, and the tip cells start kicking into gears for the secondary branching process. The cell... Fly on your wings like an eagle flies high as like this it is it is just like reaching out to the side and shit to form wings become like god like reach the heavens shit like that you know it, it, it looks like light and things reaching to it in order to evolve either into an elder's thing one maybe one of the great what are the ones of the great rate old race or the great ones i like what the fuck were they the great old race i feel like i'm talking about two people in the same sense and i feel like i'm offending both at the same time so my bad i'll stop with that um but like just look look at how that is raising itself up to something that looks like the sun which also happens to look like the thing that was talking to us in the beginning and that's kind of why that's another reason why it freaks me because it's like what are you what are you doing here? Like, you know, some shit like that. But it's, like, so interesting. Look at how it rises. And, and and getting closer and closer to the source, which is almost acting as a form of light. Though it is not actually what it represents, but the imagery is almost similar. Uh, it transforms and becomes something completely different. It sprouts things. It activates. Because it's near something that makes it activate warp and contort into tubes, making our secondary branch. The tip cells also make a bunch of molecules, it's called sprouty, and these inhibit other cells down the line from branching. The tip cells also turn off the signal cells when they're too close. This can sometimes result in the primary branch sneaking its way towards another source cell. The branching beyond this level is very loosely patterned, as the sensors are now able to pick up oxygen. This mechanism is still governed by the same two genes, branchless and breathless. Okay, so what basically he said here is, because these two tips are at the top, they finally reached up to here, they're going to deactivate the rest of these that have these little balls in them that can do the same thing. It's just like, hey, we're here. We're taking over. We're going to feed what we get from up here to y'all. Now, there's no more of the source in this whatever emitting now, but it's got a taste of oxygen. It's taking its first breath. It's inhibited life. It's just like, oh, I like this shit. This is some good shit. Not knowing that its first breath also in the case that someday it'll be its last. But that's beside the point. It is active. It is here. It is ready. It can breathe. The same idea also applies to mice lungs. Except the patterns are a little bit different. And after looking at how all of this works in detail, you might think, wait. There's no L system or fractal gene strictly encoded anywhere. There's one gene set that controls the branching, but there are more conditions governing the recursion. We're not directly copying and pasting these branches. Each layer is unique in the way that they branch. But why? Why add this layer of complexity? Isn't it a waste of DNA space to have so many genes doing repeated tasks? What about the... And see, that's the crazy thing about it, and that is what makes it so brilliant. Even looking at this branching out right here, these things are commanding these other things not to activate because they already are. As if we are awakened, we are already here. Y'all don't need to because we already have. 
right? But it's also an interesting, complex thing because, as he said, each and every branching right here will end up being individual to itself. So as these things grow, thank you. As they grow, thank you for as they grow separate from each other, they become their own things. They're, it's like you have a clone and you guys separate for a year. Are you really the same person after that? And if you have sex with your clone after not being around him for a year, does it still count as masturbation or is it incest at that point? Just questions. Just just questions I have. Because, you know, like, I never did get a straight answer about that. I asked that years ago. No one's ever answered that question. But the complexity... It makes me wonder, why is com that complexity, all of this complexity here, you think because it comes from the same strand with all of this stuff in the center. Well, actually, no, not exactly in the center, because when you really look at this, they're not all in the same position, and they're not all in the same. These are different randomizations of the exact same thing put into place. Not exactly perfect, not exactly the same, and that is why they are individualistic by nature by their own cell structure even though they are all replicas of each other they're not exact replicas but they all share a piece but only a few get to branch out because they tell the other ones hey don't branch out because i already am almost as if it's a signal for others not to awaken or to get the fuck up and branch out themselves because there's already some already doing it Algorithmic complexity argument in the first section. Well, life isn't perfect. If we have encoded just self-similar fractals, it's like having a controller that can't feedback on itself. Imagine if the body is slightly deformed mid-growth, we would have no way to feedback and correct that error. It would just cause a mess of growth. This design is much more moldable and adaptable to environment, internal or external. This design philosophy has a name. It's called modularity. This idea of modularity doesn't just apply to branching motifs. It's not even limited to growth response to the environment. Let's look at how shrimp flippers are defined. It depends on which one of these Hox genes are present. Shout out to the previous episode. Having these two genes, abdominal A and abdominal B, activated at the same time in the same segment produces flippers, while without abdominal B, it becomes walking legs. Now, what he's saying is, if there if there's a particular gene, um, if it has this gene, it'll have flippers. If it doesn't have this gene, it'll have like scally legs, midget legs, teeny tiny legs, like bottom legs, like you like midget legs, like the legs, right? But it, but what he's basically saying is there is a subset here where there is a condition that's already simple, yet the complexity is astonishing considering how much has to develop and the, how this condition spreads out and uh, develops well after the fact. Imagine if there's a mutation that gets rid of one of these flippers. If this mutation on, proves back favorable, some. the same segment produces flip not even limited to growth response to the environment. Let's look at how shrimp flippers are defined. It depends on which one of these Hox genes are present. Shout out to the previous episode. Having these two genes, abdominal A and abdominal B, activated at the same time in the same segment produces flippers, while without abdominal B, it becomes walking legs. Now, imagine if there's a mutation that gets rid of one of these flippers. If this mutation proves favorable, this mutant will be more readily selected to reproduce. You don't have to redesign the whole leg. You can just swap the activation. Mm -hmm. Isn't that an incredible evolutionary strategy? And of course, this doesn't just apply to shrimp. They also apply to a vast majority of animals, even as humans. Now, oh, shit, shit. No, 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 no. I want you to go back just slightly. Yes, now look at all of, look at all of this. Now imagine this is all coding, right? Imagine... You don't need to poison someone directly. You just need to give them something that affects their DNA code. Something subtle but doesn't show up right. Any of these can be ticked off. Maybe multiples. Maybe just one. I really don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. I'm an idiot, right? But look at all these possibilities where you can fuck someone up. Something's gotta hit. 
I hear. Something's got to hit. Some that's a lot of different shades. This one and this one are the exact same color. <laughs> and this one. And this one. And this one. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. What I'm trying to say is there's a lot of different things. Also, um, you got to figure out, figure there's a lot of different possibilities in here too. Just imagine ingesting something that could like absolutely change you up too. Now, the interesting thing with these fractals, I've noticed is that it does look like branches. So you would have to sit here and wonder what would be the exact um, sequence in all of this that you could use to try to find the way back. Because, you know, there is some way. But we gotta sit here and look at this. Like, look at all of the, all these different combinations, all these different possibilities. How would this could even be used? And pretend that that means Labrador. Because I was thinking of a dog when I saw that. Because I'm an adult. And I can't. But yeah, it's, it's just something very in, interesting to think about. It's just like maybe like if someone really wanted to affect somebody, they just hit somebody in their genetic makeup. Thank goodness I wasn't one of those people who, you know, um, signed up for that 20 me and 3 or that Ancestry.com DNA shit. That would suck if that were the case. But that would only be if my theory were true, right? But in any case, this is a really, really good um, illustration right here. Thank you, phone. Uh, what kind of map and code one would be looking for in order to go back to the road from Orion? Or go back to Orion itself? The very start. Very, very interesting shit, I must say. Well, yes, it might be disappointing that the essence of how life is built isn't fully based on beautiful, idealized, and perfect self-similar fractals. Well, if that were true, life would be incredibly stagnant and unadaptable. On the other hand, if life had no pattern or organization at all, it would also be equally hard to evolve and change. There'd be a need to define every single part, even for the mundane details. What's pretty cool though, is that life defines its parts recursively. This means that it can change bits and pieces without having to redo the entire thing just to get a new trait. It's in this delicate balance between adaptability and self-similarity that we discover one of life's most remarkable strategies that allows it to thrive amidst the unpredictable and diverse conditions of this earth. All of that at astonishing speeds. It's quite poetic that the perfect and beautiful fractals we've seen in living things are actually a reflection into their readiness for imperfection. Thank you immensely for watching. Wasn't that like nifty? That was nifty. And I think that was absolutely something entertaining to watch. And it, and it, it, like, it, it definitely like gives one food for thought. So I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I will come back with another one at some other point. And I will talk to you later. Bye.